episode on the Renodo Data Bytes series. This is your host Neha and our guest this week for the second time on the show is Andrea Zeno. Andrea is a data evangelist as well as a podcast host himself for the Denodo Data Pop show in Italian here at Denodo. Andrea has more than 30 years of experience in the information technology space where he has held several roles ranging from machine learning to innovation to digital transformation as well as advanced data analytics. Thank you for joining us, Andrea. We're really looking forward to a fun session today on all things data lake house. But before we begin our session, can you give us a brief introduction about yourself and your role here at Denodo for all of our new listeners? Hi Neha, uh, thanks for the invitation. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I'm uh, 62 years old, uh, married with two children, one of 22 and the other uh, 26. I have a statistical background, but I always work in the ICT field where I've almost always dealt with data and the representation. And starting in 2019, I joined the Nodo. Initially, I was said with the role of sales director and then moved to a data evangelist role. So that evangelist is not an easy to describe role, uh, but it can be defined as a sort of dual role. The first is spreading Denodo's approach to data management. Uh, you know, Denodo is uh, um, a company that uses logical, a logical approach to data management. This is a quite new concept, so it is very important to spread and to share the message behind this new approach to manage data. The second one is to sub- help and support organization in their data-driven transformation. So sharing international experiences, uh, showing them how a logical approach to data management is the best enabler for this transformation, helping them to avoid pitfall, errors, and whatever. So is uh, is not a technical role, is uh, a sort of advisory role, a sort of mix between, uh, uh, let me say, functional business and consultancy role. As for the podcast, as you said, we have recently launched an Italian version that is called the Noto Data Pops, where we talk about the many aspects of data, both in person, usually me recording episodes about specific topics, but uh, and this is the most interesting episodes, I think, by inviting customers, partners, and the university professor. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Andrea, for the great introduction. And uh, also, uh, thank you for uh, talking about Denodo Data Pops. So moving forward towards our topic of discussion today. So before we start talking about Data Lake House as a concept, can you tell us about the value of data warehouse and data lakes and how that uh, relates to Data Lake House? Yeah, let me say in uh, in a nutshell, the values, uh, their values, the values of data warehouse and data lay lies in the quality of the data they contain. Structure data for the data warehouse and basically unstructured data for the data lake. Both of these containers, we can call data warehouse and data lake a sort of data containers. Both of these containers, in fact, are created by taking data from different data sources and applying those some data transformation that are believed to be functional to maximize the value of the data and the use that can be made of it. So if you go back when the data warehouse was uh, conceived, probably 30 years are past, was uh, conceived exactly to, let me say, to give high quality data to the analyst to build a report and whatever. Both the data warehouse and the data lake are in fact, and this is what happened in the in the real life project, are in fact the most suitable sources for analysis activities, both traditional and descriptive, like a, a reporting or dashboarding, but also for advanced and predictive analytics, such artificial intelligence and machine learning. By the way, Data Lake was built exactly to address as a first priority the data science uh, data science department within within an industry uh, unfortunately as it move and, uh, as it moves ever faster and produce data ever more rapidly because you know the world is moving very fast uh, new data are produced on uh, with a very fast uh, with a very uh, high speed uh, so if we go look back uh, 
ten, just 10 years ago, the speed was incredibly low with respect to the speed that we are now uh, have to cope right nowadays. So what is uh, the problem is that uh, this increase in speed and also the increasing request for data from data scientists or from traditional analytics uh, make, make the uh, data warehouse and data lake, lake house managing becomes uh, even made the, the managing of the data even more complex and resource hungry with respect to the past. Because the, the most important point is that by the initial loading of the data warehouse or the data lake, a lot of resources uh, are need and spend to keep this container updated. And uh, they must be done, uh, this kind of updates must be done more and more frequently in order to have fresh data and that are fresh and aligned with what actually happens in the real world. So what uh, these two container as very important, uh, data warehouses is not a new uh, a new idea to manage data. The data lake is quite new, but are very consolidated. What let me say? What make the situation worse is that uh, the, the speed on which the data are produced that imply a very a very uh, change in the way the data are managed within these two important containers. Before we deep dive more about data lakehouse as a concept, a data lakehouse is a data platform which merges the best aspects of the data warehouses and data lakes, right? Uh, into one maybe data management solution, if we can yeah. put it that way. Perfect. So uh, now to, to deep dive a little bit further, what is a data lakehouse and why is it needed? Can you talk specifically a little bit more about data lakehouses? Uh, yes, I think... Uh... To answer uh, the question, we need to again go back to the data-driven transformation because one of the key elements of this kind of transformation is the easy of using data. Uh, and the first condition uh, for this uh, is to be possible to have a single point of access to such data. This is a sort of constraints. I think uh, there is no company thinking that they can effectively manage data without a single access point. It's very similar when, to, when you go to a library. The first thing you do is to, uh, let me say, access the global catalog of the library, try to find the books or whatever you need. So what is the problem is that if we have a a two very important data container, the data warehouse and the data lake, but at the same time, we want to have a single access point for data, we need to put the two things together in, 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 in a way that is be, be possible to, for data consumer to have a single access point. So the problem, so the concept is quite clear. We, we need to put together these two very important data container. But the problem arises of how to allow to uh, create us, uh, to uh, this uh, single access point, uh, because uh, we have not to forget that the, the data consumer is interesting in the meaning of data, not of the, uh, not about the technical aspect of the data. So when we uh, want to create this uh, single access point, uh, we need to have it clearly have in mind the data consumer, and we need to provide them a very easy way to inspect the data, to understand what the data represent. So the data lake house at the same time is a sort of convert a point of con a point where to collect. Uh, uh, data from the data warehouse or data lake and at the same time be the single access point for data consumer. So data lake house is basically a point of convergence of data warehouse and data exactly. lake, correct? Okay, perfect. So um, that brings me to my next question. How does data lake house architecture unify the best parts of data warehouse and data lakes while avoiding the problem areas that we have in, within both of these concepts? So assuming that data lake house, as you said, is the, a sort of convergency point uh, for different data source, mainly data warehouse and data lake, and uh, to build a single access point, we need to keep in mind that data consumer is interesting also in the meaning part of the data or the semantic part of the data. So the problem is uh, the way we uh, built, if we 
want to build the data lake house because uh, at this point uh, we need to make a choice how to uh, let me say put together the data coming from different data sources uh, we have the traditional um, um, the traditional approach we have the logical one uh, so uh, even if the fa from a functional point of view, the scenario is quite clear, the, our objective is quite clear. We need to provide a single access point for data consumer that, mu that must be easily uh, usable, uh, uh, hiding all the technological aspects of the data that are of any interest for the data consumer. Uh, the problem that we need to solve is about how can we how can we build this kind of uh, unique access point independently that we call uh, decide to call data lake house or whatever so the key point is how to put together this very important and very huge data container data warehouse and data lake uh, to avoid any pitfall any error any degradation in terms of performances and so on that makes sense. Uh, thanks a lot for explaining that, Andrea. So, um, what what are some challenges then with data lake house concepts? Uh, are there any major challenges that you would like to highlight? Yes, uh, the challenge is mainly uh, on the technological uh, technology point of view because if we uh, decide to build the lake house with exactly the same approach uh, that is normally used to build the data warehouse or data lake that is the ETL or ELT paradigm so to physically extract the data from different data source and loading into uh, data warehouse or data lake. This is the normal way a data warehouse or a data lake is built. So physically extract the data, apply some transformation, and loading the data, physically loading the data into the data lake or the data warehouse. Uh, this, you know, introduce some problem because you need uh, a lot, a significant amount of resources. You need to copy the data, not only the first time, but you need to uh, keeping the data updated. So you have to refresh the data very frequently because the data change very frequently and so on. So if you use the same approach also for the data lake house, this means that you have to introduce a second level of data replication from the data warehouse and data lake into the data lake house. So you have a two level replication strategy that is very resource consuming, uh, that is uh, make the problem of have, uh, to have the uh, updated data uh, even worse because you not only have to take into account the refreshing of data warehouse and data lake, but also the refreshing on data warehouse, on data lake house. So the traditional approach amplify the problems related to the use of resources. So both for the first loading and for keeping uh, the data lake house aligned with respect to the change that will occur in the data warehouse on data lake. And if you uh, think of very big organization that have to manage the task to manage uh, a very high volume of data, this uh, process to keep all the data up, uh, up to date is very time consuming. We have some interesting case in Italy that they spend uh, to update the, just the data lake, uh, they spent uh, five days of uh, computational power to align the data lake with the, the, with the data that comes from different data source. So imagine that you have to implement the data lake house with the same approach. So probably you will spend uh, a lot of time just to keep the data aligned instead to give the data to the users that need, need them. So we've discussed all the uh, challenges associated with data lake house, but where does the connect principle come in? Uh, how can the challenges associated with data lake house be eliminated with a logical approach? Yes, here the, the key point of a logical approach, you know, is to, uh, to separate the logical part of the data uh, uh, by the, the, the physical one. This separation is not a technical one, or, or let me say is not uh, uh, suggested by technical aspect, but is suggested by uh, the way the data are normally used. Uh, when you when you need the data, when uh, a data consumer needs the data, uh, there is a first step when he or she have to find the data they need. So they have uh, some support uh, 
in searching the data, understanding the meaning, the relations with other data. And this is what we have called a single access point. Only after a data consumer has decided which data they need, the second part of the data, so the physical part of the data, comes into play because the data must be retrieved by some data sources that could be data lake house, data warehouse, or data lake and deliver it to the data consumer. So the idea of a logical approach is exactly to split these two uh, components of the data. So to create a single access point that contains just the logical part of the data or the metadata, just to use a well-known term, leaving the data the real data on the da different data source. So imagine that you want to build a data lake house and that you have a, a logical, uh, you have a data warehouse and a data lake. Instead of create a new container where to replicate the data, you create a logical level on top of these uh, uh, two very important container, the data warehouse and data lake, put in this uh, logical level just the representation of the data, just the logical part, leaving the data on the respective, on the, the, the other data source. So you, you don't have to cope with alignment, you, are, you don't have to cope with the initial loading, but at the same time, you give the data consumer a clear view of, uh, of the data. And this is the idea of logical data lake. The other very interesting point of a logical approach is that the use of a logical level the caps, the data from those we, uh, who use them, and this guarantee excellent resiliency to technological change in the underlying platform. For example, suppose that you have your data warehouse is on a very specific technology and you decide to uh, move the data warehouse on in, the, in the cloud or to change the technology. If you have a logical level that uh, isolate the technical aspect of the data from the data consumer, uh, even if you completely change the, the backend technology, the data consumer doesn't uh, uh, the data consumer are completely protect, protected from them because they still continue to use that data logical level and will be in charge of the data platform to change the way uh, uh, the data are really uh, taken from the data sources connected. So if the data warehouse will move a different technology at the data platform level, you, you will have to change uh, the data connector, the data strategy, but at the data consumer level, uh, nothing happened because the data consumer still to use data accessing the logical component. And uh, there is another very important point that is very peculiar of logical architecture, and uh, that is the logical architecture uh, 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 and that is the ability to maintain the link between the logical and physical component. So, and this is very fundamental uh, for, for example, for self-service data provisioning, because uh, you can, in the first phase, uh, inspect the data through, for example, our uh, data catalog. And when you find the data, you can immediately use them because the data catalog keep the link with the real uh, with the data source when the data are stored and this is very important and this is a key difference with other sort of catalog that um, very often are named as business glossaries or data dictionary that in reality are essentially descriptive ones so the idea of logical architecture and specifically of logical data lake house is at the same time to guarantee a unique access point to data, uh, isolating at the same time all the technology, technological aspect of the data and uh, doing that without the need to create another data replication with all the uh, implication that comes from this uh, traditional approach. Thank you so much for uh, taking us through the logical aspect uh, when it comes to data lake house that really explained it very well. So um, uh, to, to wrap up our conversation for the day, can you uh, give us a customer use case for the logical data lake house architecture and uh, uh, quickly take us through the implementation aspect of it, please? Uh, honestly, uh, the data lake house idea is quite new. So at least in Italy, many of our customers or prospects are still in a evaluation or analysis phase. This means that uh, as far as I know, there is no 
that have a chaos already in place in, many, in, in, in almost all the case. Surely, however, the need to have a single point of access to data is very clear and uh, an idea which, however, is not infrequently achieved by migrating the data from the data warehouse to the data lake. So in other words, in many cases, the data lake effectively becomes a data lake house. So they mm -hmm. use, uh, let me say, the data lake uh, transforming the initial idea of data lake in something more broad, more general, ingesting also the data from data lake house. However, this approach becomes very complicated when there, uh, there are a lot of data, as I said before, and uh, when there is a strong need for updated data, uh, which is why with some of our customers, we are evaluating the idea of creating a logical layer above the data lake. So the situation is very few customers, probably none at the moment, are really thinking to a data lake house. But having them both the data uh, warehouse and so the data lake house, but having them both the data warehouse and the data lake the, in the data lake and wanted to have a single point, they said, okay, as a first step, let us just copy in the data warehouse within the data lake. We say, Sorry, this is not the right approach, uh, in our opinion. Uh, the best approach is to create a logical layer on top of the data lake, leaving the data. On the, data, on the data warehouse, leaving the data on the data lake, eventually integrating all the uh, other data sources, but um, let me say, letting to the logical layer to make all the integration uh, work to keep all the data, to, to have the possibility to put, to put together all the data and to offer a single access point to the customer. I think that uh, the data lake house is a concept that at the moment, uh, let me say, one year ago was a concept uh, uh, very, uh, very well um, spread uh, in, the, in the event, in the, in, in the literature and whatever. Now, my impression is that there is not a really step, step back, but in some cases, they, the organization and the customer start to understand it that create a data lake house in a traditional way is a is a very complicated. It's probably is something that cannot be really achieved considering how, how much data they have to manage. So they are searching for a different approach and now uh, and this is why we are proposing a logical approach, a logical approach, not specifically for data lake house, but a logical approach to connect the data from any possible data sources, data warehouse, data lake, or uh, whatever, without having the problem uh, that are instead uh, common from a traditional approach. So thank you so much, Andrea, for joining us for a very interesting You're session. You're welcome. <laughs> it was really great talking to you today on uh, Data Lake House and all the various uh, aspects about it. Just like last time, uh, we have that quick uh, Q&A round uh, if you have a few minutes to spare. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, just uh, two short questions for you. So what type of music do you prefer? Honestly, I'm not a really fan of music, which uh, I often hear uh, in the background while doing other things. But anyway, uh, um, I like uh, jazz, blues, but I also like uh, eats of the moment, honestly. <laughs> so uh, uh, let me say, like the data, I think that uh, any different uh, style of music could be important uh, depending on the moment or what you are doing. Uh, if you are in the evening, in the morning, if you are doing gym or if you are relaxing on, on the beach or whatever. So I pick up the right music for the right moment. <laughs> Very well said. My final question for the day is, uh, which book or show are you reading or watching currently, if you had to name one? Uh, let me say, there are two different moments. During the summer, uh, when I'm on vacation, I do prefer to read light, uh, light books like um, mainly thrillers, uh, preferably, preferably Italian thrillers, that, so thrillers that uh, are uh, occurring in some Italian city. Uh, during the other season, however, uh, books on philosophy, which is my other passion. Uh, this could be strange, <laughs> 
between at the first glance, ICT and philosophy seems to be very different things. But uh, when I start uh, when, with uh, my very first job, uh, I was in the artificial intelligence uh, field. And I think that you cannot really understand AI in terms of potential and limits if you don't have uh, some philosophical background, because the two topics are really, are really connected. Uh, you know, philosophy is something that, uh, let me say, that inspire question instead of that uh, answer. So you uh, study philosophy, you take the ability to ask yourself a lot of questions about the possibility to do something or not to doing and whatever. So ve very different uh, reading thrillers, very, very easy, easy reading thrillers and a very complicated philosophy book. I like how you related uh, philosophy to, you know, uh, ICT and you know, how it helps you uh, in your in your career as well. So that, that, that was a fun answer. Thank you so much, Andrea. This has been a great episode and uh, I hope we get to talk soon again. Yeah, thank you very much and again for the invitation and uh, see you soon, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> great. And a quick message to our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, please head over to www.denodo.com slash podcast to find out more resources on all things data. And don't forget to check out our Italian podcast on www.denodo.com slash datapops. 